everyone, I'm Larissa Russell of Creative You, and I'm your host of the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Here's where we talk about the connection between creativity and healing by interviewing amazing creatives, spectacular healers, and inspiring people who have used creativity in their healing. What does it mean to be creative? What is creativity? You don't have to write a best-selling book or paint a masterpiece or even play in a rock band. Creativity is in everything that we do, in the ways we think, in the way we run a business, in our everyday lives, we are creative all the time. Let's talk about how we are creative and how creativity helps us heal mentally, physically, and emotionally, right now on the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Hi everyone, Larissa Russell of Creative You, and welcome back to the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Today I have with me Angela Fair. Angela was part of our second annual Loving Healing Creating Summit we ran in February and shared with us a mini abstract watercolor teaching. You can still get access to the summit at www.lovinghealingcreating.com. So a 25 year love affair with watercolor has taught Angela that it is the heart that gives life to our art. Since 2013, Angela has empowered watercolor lovers all over the world with her gentle, open and authentic approach to teaching loose watercolor an approach that allows painters to make peace with the learning process, creating paintings that don't have to be perfect to be beautiful. Angela's online courses have inspired thousands of students. Her extensive course list includes Learn Watercolor the Heart-Led Way and Heart-Led Landscapes in Watercolor, as well as comprehensive watercolor mastery course designed to help students focus on principles and quickly level up their skills. Her fearless artist community is full of students exploring heart-led expression posting their experiments and discussing ways to break out of fear as they become their own favorite artists. Angela shares her home and five gorgeous acres in Northern British Columbia, Canada, where I am as well. I'm not in BC, sadly, but <laughs> with her hot rod build, her husband and three creative teens. So welcome, Angela. Thank you, Larissa. It's uh, it's exciting to be here. And it, it feels like I'm talking to a neighbor. I mean, you are in the neighboring province to me, and I actually only live a couple of miles from the border. So yeah, <laughs> we have a lot in common. Yeah. Yes, I know. I was excited. But another Canadian because there's, I feel like there's not enough of us, but I actually, for the summit this year, had quite a few Canadians. So I'm, I'm really was excited by that. But mm. so can you share some of your story and the path that's brought you to where you are? Uh, yeah, I love I love telling my story because I think it's very relatable. I there's not not too much that's special about about me and what I do. Uh, I I grew up uh, loving art and wanting to make art, but never thinking it could be a career. Uh, I don't think I knew a single working artist when I was uh, young, and so when I discovered watercolor, uh, I took my first watercolor course at the age of eighteen. Uh, you know, I, I love the medium, I wanted to do well at it. And it was really exciting to um, see progress and uh, join the local art society and exhibit my work with, uh, with the artists in the community, but really um, making a living as an artist being um, exceptional in any way, you know, it was a it was a secret hope, but uh, it was never something that I thought that I could do. Um, so it was, and, and yet I always wanted to be um, a great artist. Uh, and when I re started to realize that maybe I was just going to be an average artist, um, actually, that was very, very freeing because I stopped trying to be perfect and I started learning how to enjoy the process. And from that decision to instead of trying to be the best, but just to love what I do and put more of me into it, that became uh, a driving force. It became something that I'm very passionate about and love to teach. And it became a career. So I've been very, very fortunate in that uh, discovery of, you know, what truly drives uh, the most authentic art. And it's been a lot of fun. Oh, I love that answer. Because it's true, the more authentic you are in the creative process, the more that shows, right? When you're trying to recreate or trying to to be somebody or something else, um, it, that also shows, right? So that authenticity mm -hmm. definitely is important when creating for yourself and, and what you want to yeah. do. Yeah, and ego yeah. gets in the way, you know, like that desire to be perfect and to show how good I am at something that gets in the way so often. And, and so often I'll see students who will say, I was just messing around and this beautiful thing came out and how come I can't do this on purpose? And I think that's why we need to learn how to let go of that desire to, 
to be flawless so we can really um, let our guard down and have some fun. Yes, absolutely. So can you tell us what healing with creativity means to you? Um, yeah, that's, uh, I, I've, it was fun thinking about your questions. They're, they're so good and there's so much. I think we could talk for half an hour just on that one, uh, that one concept. Uh, creativity has been powerful for me. It's, it's been instrumental in helping me to lead a more meaningful life. I talked about ego getting in the way of art, but it gets in the way of life too. When we start, I think as, as, a, as a 20 year old, you know, you think your life's going to look a certain way and you want to, um, you want to be a grown up. So you want to act like a grown up. And, and then we realize there's not really any rules. Um, and, and I think uh, what I've wanted in my life is uh, a lot of the lessons I've learned from creativity, um, learning how to manage my emotions and my expectations um, has, has come through making art. Um, learning problem solving skills for me has come through making art, you know, that first painting not turning out and then needing to learn how to refine it. Um, and learning what it means to truly be authentic has been a big part of my art journey that has affected my life. So I really feel like in discovering who I am through creativity, it helps me approach my, the rest of my life with more vulnerability, uh, a passion for what is genuine and true. Uh, and it's also deepened my relationship, my, my faith journey, uh, my relationship with God and wanting to hear his voice in creation in the world around I love me. that answer. Yeah, I love and and you know, I was just thinking about what you said at the end about that um uh deepening your relationship with God and I found that the more I have done my art, the more spiritual it has become, right? And that that's a really important part to me yeah. and um I I haven't had anybody else uh answer it that way and I'm like, yeah, I'm really recognizing that now and so I really like that really like that I I just bought a book of poems by Mary Oliver and unfortunately I just discovered her work after she passed away and you know everybody's they were quoting her on the news and and I'm like I have to buy this art this poet because that her her desire and her her ability to see um to see and hear voices all around her in nature, um, speaking of the beauty of the world. And she lived in the same world we do that's full of brokenness. And yet she'd get out in nature and see deeper meaning, truth, and um, communicate with God without words. And uh, I thought, you know, as artists, we are attuned to, we look at a painting and we identify, we, we learn things about the artist through their, th through their art. So why wouldn't we do that with the world around us uh, as a creation of, you know, a master creator? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what inspires you then in the work that you do? Um, I, I've... I feel like I'm inspired in two ways because my career, um, what I do is, is kind of a two part thing. I make art, but I also teach. And so uh, in my art, I'm inspired by the beauty of the landscape. I very much uh, identify um, my time in nature as being healing, um, as an opportunity to um, live a richer life. And I want to share the emotion and joy I feel, the, the desire for beauty in my work. Uh, and then in my courses in community, when I'm teaching online, uh, I'm inspired by seeing other artists kind of break through uh, some of the, the some of the boxes they've put themselves in. Perhaps mm -hmm. um, I want to encourage artists, and, and that's really my number one mission: is I want to see artists feel encouraged and inspired to be the artists they were meant to be. And a lot mm -hmm. of the, my students start out not even being able to call themselves artists. You know, they want to paint, but they would never think of owning that name. And so to see that mission for encouraging and inspiring artists to letting them know that they have permission to become their own favorite artists, that's incredibly rewarding for me. So that's, that's a major driving force. Uh, and for me, I think, I don't know, I, I think that almost drives me more than making art myself. And, and maybe that's because there is such an element of giving in it. Yeah. I, I find working with people is really, um, uh, I, I don't even know what the right word is, but that when you're working with people and you see those aha moments or you mm -hmm. see that breakthrough yeah. and it just inspires you to want to do more, right? It inspires mm -hmm. you to just want to keep going and giving that so that other people can experience that. Yeah, yeah. there's and, such a strong sense of mission there. And 
um, yeah, and ministry, you know, you're serving and, uh, and that's very rewarding. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of, you know, talk about monetizing healing and creative work. And what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I haven't really been a part of that debate at all. Uh, for some reason, I don't, I don't usually get challenged on the fact that I am, you know, asking money for courses and, and, uh, and uh, access to what I do. But um, as I thought about it, I thought, you know, one reason I've never really had a problem with monetizing what I do um, is I don't think that we really value creative work in the way we should. And um, culturally, when we monetize something, we tend to value it more. And so it almost seems like we need to have that monetization because um, we need to bring a sense of value to the deep work that brings a richer life. Uh, we pay money for really kind of ridiculous things. I mean, who'd ever thought the amount of money that's spent on like, I don't know, hair removal, <laughs> you know, in our society. Uh, and yet we won't, you know, we wouldn't consider um, investing in our mental health. Uh, creativity is such a valuable part of that. And so uh, I really, I believe in valuing what I do. And I believe in bringing that sense of value to others too. I want them to value it as well. And sometimes it, that comes through, yeah, putting a dollar figure on it. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, I think, I think it's that understanding of that too, right? That, um, and, and more for the people who are offering, I think, than the people who are receiving, is that you understanding your value as someone who's offering, right? And then understanding how people will value it more yeah. yeah, well, like watercolor, an instant ele elevation. It almost, um, you, often when students start painting, they won't buy the good paper for their watercolor paintings. And paper is a big factor in mm -hmm. how hard it's going to be to learn watercolor. If you're learning on really good paper, uh, you're going to learn faster. You just fight with the paper less. And as soon as you decide to invest in that quality paper, it actually elevates your, your feeling about what you do. And so, you know, there's, there's a psychological thing that happens there and it's, yeah, I don't think we should discount that. So we, I elevate, you know, I want to elevate what I do by um, valuing it fairly uh, and respecting it. And I want others to have that same respect. So I need to have that first. Yeah, absolutely. So what is the creative healing modality you use the most for yourself? <laughs> When I come into the studio, I really do need it to be healing for me. Um, and what I've found is that the greatest growth for me is in play. Um, the majority of my painting time actually, as much as I wanna paint like big, serious, exciting paintings, the majority of my painting time is spent in just finding, uh, seeking a playful sense of freedom. Uh, this feeling that I can do anything that I want and none of it is wrong. So I have to start with playtime first and kind of shake off the, the stress of the day, um, the pressure to excel, um, you know, anything that's kind of weighing down my mind and find that unguarded. Um, I kind of think of it as a belly laugh, you know, when you're with someone you love and lo who loves you and you don't have to pretend with them at all. And I mean, those are the times we have our best laughs uh, where we feel the most free to be who we are. And I want to make that place in my studio. So I come into the studio to play, first of all, and to be that friend to myself um, that, yeah, I can be a little bit ridiculous or unguarded. And uh, from there comes my, my most authentic work. So I see uh, a lot of freedom in that. And hopefully it makes me a more authentic person when I come out of the studio as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that because I think it's important. And even when we're learning something, we get so caught up in, I have to do this right, mm -hmm. right? I have to, but if you can just allow yourself to play, you learn so many different things, you know, how the water flows on the paper, how, how the brush works, you know, different things like that. And so allowing yourself to just play. I love that. Yeah, I, love yeah, that. I need to actually write down the numbers, but I read a study somewhere that was talking about small children and the retention of what they learn being significantly greater, like, I don't know, 400%, I don't know, I'm making up a number now, but enormously greater when they were learning through play rather than, you know, in a more academic way. So why yeah. wouldn't that work for us too? Um, yeah. and, and I felt guilty for many years for not being more academic about painting and, and doing the, the, 
uh, more intentional study work um, and failing to realize how much I was learning just through coming to the studio and painting for the joy of it. Yeah, absolutely. So what would you say you're most proudest of in your life? Um, yeah, that's, that's a tough question to answer. Um, I think we're so wired to not want to brag about, you know, who we are. And uh, so, you know, we think about uh, the things I value the most uh, is where I kind of went with that. Um, you know, I, I value my family, my kids. I love the business that I have. I really enjoy doing what I do. Um, but I think I value most um, the way my mindset has changed over the years, actually, and the person that I've become through that. Um, there's a grace that I've experienced that has transformed how I relate to the world. And it's made it possible for me to um, have a lot of peace, no matter what my situation is. Um, I feel like uh, through art and through my faith, I've learned that nothing that I go through is wasted. Um, no, no painting time is wasted because it all uh, teaches me something. Uh, none of the struggles in my life are wasted because they make me a more compassionate person. Um, so I'm, I'm learning that when I truly believe that I am um, deeply loved, then it gives me a very secure foundation for being able to um, love others, to bring my whole heart to my business. Um, so to me, that was that was kind of where I went. My greatest value is found in that in that place of peace and love, um, and just being where I am and who I am with with that kind of fearless wholeheartedness. Yeah, that's I love that. I love that. And so if you could change one aspect of our society through your work, what would that be? Um, I, think, I think it comes down to, we actually have a mission statement with my business um, that comes down to basically telling our students um, that the message is always you matter and what you do matters. Uh, I think if we lived in a world where everybody really believed that, uh, I think we'd have a, a completely different society. Um, I can't change the world, but I can work in my small space with integrity uh, and grace and trust. And, and, I, and I also um, feel so much, um, just a small bit of encouragement and hope in knowing that there are other people um, who are out there doing the same thing in their corners of the world. Uh, and often I, I actually see that in my online student community. Uh, you know, these are all people who have those same um, goals of just, uh, I'm going to bring my, my whole self to my work. And I know that transforms uh, the rest of our lives as well. So uh, I think that's a way of illuminating the darkness in, in a broken society. Yeah. And if we have enough people that are, you know, bringing a little bit of light and a little bit of light, and eventually, hopefully that light grows and grows, right? So yeah, yeah. Malcolm yeah. Gladwell has an amazing book, The Tipping Point, and it talks about the power of small changes. And not just to assume that it takes some big massive thing to change the world, but it's just small little things that can make a big difference. And they certainly do, you know, to the people we come in contact with. Yeah, absolutely. So have you ever struggled with imposter syndrome in your work? And if so, how have you gotten over it? Um, yeah, I, I'm still, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I'm still just um, a girl in a northern rural community that um, doesn't have a lot of qualifications after her name. And so it's really easy to feel um, like maybe I'm trying to get away with something I shouldn't. <laughs> um, but I have this such a strong sense of mission that that's always been greater than my, my shame of not having been chosen. Uh, everything I've achieved in my life uh, through my business, through art, I've had to um, ask for, you know, no one's been knocking on my door asking me to create online courses. Um, the first time I wanted to do a, a travel workshop, I had to organize it myself. Um, you know, teaching on creative mindset, I've never thought anybody would want to hear what I had to say about, you know, my thoughts about those things. I, but I had such a strong passion and purpose that that kind of overcame any any imposter syndrome. And I'm very well supported in my home as well. My husband's just behind me all the way. And uh, that's been really um, helpful too, because he's often told me, you've got nothing to lose. So you might as well just go for it and don't worry about what people think. And, and that's, uh, that's helped a lot. Mm -hmm. I know imposter syndrome, I find is one of those things that it's just, it's you, it, mm -hmm. right? It's you that's like mm -hmm. uh, fighting with yourself. And if you can yeah. just let go, 
and see what happens. Yeah. See what happens. Right. What I have to lose, really. And and that was actually the, the first time I, I told my husband I wanted to make an online course, but I was afraid to. And he's like, well, you got nothing to lose. So, you know, it wasn't like I was doing anything else aside from, you know, being home with my family. So, yeah, it was it was mm-hmm. that it was support. It was it was the support I needed that permission slip uh, when I was afraid to sign it. He often will for me. So that's been really valuable. Oh, I love that. I love that. So do you have an inspirational quote that you live by? So many. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I started thinking about this and it's like, how do you get, how do you get down to one? Uh, I was looking at Mary Oliver's poems. I was, I've been reading a marvelous, uh, another marvelous book about our connection to the world and uh, living in, in this place of grace and purpose. Um, but I, at, at the end of the day, I, I went uh, to a Bible verse that uh, I think has has application for art as well as for life and it's first john 4 18 there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear and uh, it's that wholehearted living that uh, just keeps stepping forward and uh, you get knocked down and you get up and you continue to, to step forward in love you make a bad painting and you pour yourself into the next one and uh, that's that's a powerful rule to live by and uh, there's a lot of freedom in that too yeah yeah, I, I, I think that's a great one, right? Because if we can have, just bring more love into the world, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and um, I think not, you know, I, it, what has been tripping me up lately is often I'll um, be afraid that I won't be, get the love that I need. And it's like, well, at the end of the day, I can't control that, but I can control how much I put out into the world. And so, you know, I go back to that. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, that's. And that's a good thing to be aware of too, right? Mm-hmm. That that can be a sticking point or a, a, something that stops you, but it's like, you have no power over that. Yeah, and, and art is not like that. You know, we have so many things we can't control in our art. I can't control how fast I'm gonna get the skills that I wanna have, but I can show up and paint and, do, and work towards the goals that I want. And mm-hmm. uh, so I can't control, you know, how good I am, but I control how much fun I have and how much of myself I put in. So, yeah. yeah. Now, I, you also said you have a free gift for our listeners. Do you want to tell them a little bit about that? Yeah, I have been, uh, I, I always love introducing uh, new painters to watercolor or uh, encouraging someone who's been struggling with watercolor because we often hear the myth that it's the hardest medium. And uh, like all things that feel difficult, it's very, very rewarding. Uh, the, the things that are hard uh, have, the most, have the most to give us. And uh, so I I love introducing students to watercolor. So I have a online course called Watercolor Jumpstart. Um, It's a free course. It's available to anyone who signs up and I'll I'll include a link to that. Uh, It's Mm -hmm. a great look at just that process of learning technique, but also thinking about your art in a way that kind of frees you to be the artist you were meant to be. Perfect. We will definitely add that link there. And is there anything else at all you'd like to add that we maybe haven't discussed today that you want our list, listeners to know? Um, I, I think number one, I think, is uh, just that we are all creative. And uh, our creativity is simply how we express our, our deepest selves to the world. And we need to feel permission to, to do that. And uh, it's so rewarding when you do um, pour out your creativity into something and uh, see people respond to the real you that's uh, on your paper or in your baking or in your writing or wherever you express yourself. For my husband, it's building cars. <laughs> um, but there's a place, I think, for our ideas in the world and uh, so exciting to see those come to life. So I would just encourage anyone who has that deep yearning to get something you know, out, <laughs> uh, go for it. You've got nothing to lose. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't hurt to try. Yeah. to try yeah. and there's so much and, to in that process yeah well I want to thank you so much for being here Angela thank you for having me yes and to our listeners we will see you again next week in the meantime have amazingly creative days bye for now do you know about the courses and programs that we offer at creative view meditation and journaling in our morning calm program Step Into Your Authentic Self is a program to help you heal from past traumas and start believing in yourself so you can be your healthiest, happiest you. We even have a Healing with Creativity monthly membership where you get healing projects twice a month, plus so much more. 
keep watch as we're always adding more classes and programs. Plus, we offer free challenges, access to summits and retreats, as we love sharing. Click below to see what we have happening now.